He was born in Calabar, Cross River State in South, South Nigeria, but has found fame in Ghana. Entertainment News on Channel Television today, Sportslight singer, music producer and drummer, Jay Mera. Don't go away. The story of Nigerian singer, music producer and drummer Joshua Obama starts in the bedroom with his father and siblings singing bedtime songs. But today, he has become one of the country's many exports, thriving in neighboring West African country, Ghana. Popularly known as Jay Mera, the Calabar-born entertainer whose journey started in Nigeria initially did not have much regard for music. When I was little, my dad always made us sing every night before we went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be like, hey, guys, come out here. I'm going to recall you people. And I need everybody to sing. So we sang. I, tiny little voices and everything. We just do the best we can because we want to sleep, so we'll sing the best we can and we'll go to bed. And then I grew up joining the you know, children's choir in church. Yeah, the youth choir. I became a season youth choir director in my church. And then I gradually started learning how to pick skills, like how to lead people, how to teach people songs, how to teach people chord progressions. I'm a drummer, but I love to play keyboards. So keyboards has really helped me in the production and music arranging because I get to write music too. So it's been a lot of things for me, but the education has been every step of the way because I keep picking things from different points, putting them together, and here we are. However, before now, music was not his life's dream. Music wasn't really my thing, surprisingly. I didn't want to play. I love to sing a lot. But I didn't know how to play. I have brothers who basically ended up becoming my mentors on the drum set, you know, because they could play, I couldn't, but I just need a, hey, if it's my brother play, I think he's the best in the world, so that was it, you know. And it became like that until a few years into it. And I got, I'm, I'm doing it, and hey, it's, it's great, and I think, man, I can do this for a long time, so. His brother may have influenced him to join the drum line, but staying there and perfecting his craft took a lot of self-training. I've really been influenced by a lot of rock music, heavy metal, gospel. I think gospel has been my greatest influence musically because I've gotten to understand how the American sound is, the British sound is, the Asian sound is, the African sound is when it comes to gospel. Although I still get to listen to a lot of rap, I'm a hip hop person. I love hip hop and R&B. And, but the thing is, I can fuse everything together. I'm a gospel person as a recording artist and as a drummer, as a producer, although I still get to work with you know, secular artists once in a while. But I think that my sound is basically gospel and fusion. So that's, that's it. Though his love for Nigeria remains intact, he found a niche he could fill in Ghana which led him back to school to study about animation and music. I went to Ghana the first time for a recording project, finished the project, it was great, and I thought it was a cool place. Let me just go back in there, but I didn't just want to go back there because I want to go chill. Uh -uh. I want to go there because I want to go do something. So I found out a little bit of details, and then I left for Ghana, 3D animation came in, and in the process of studying animation and music, you got to understand how genres work. And then you get to understand how some people look at film music, the Asians. See, that's where the Asian thing comes in now, because you know, like, try to understand how the Asians think when they're creating music, the Americans think when they're creating music, everybody, how everybody tries to generally think. And then you still have to be able to put everybody together, because the way the, way the American film industry deals with music is not the way the Asian industry deals with music. It's different. There are different cultures, different sounds, different shades, different everything. So it was part of my education because it helped me and I listen a lot. I try to go in, listen to various artists. I listen to everything from Jim Reeves to Michael Jackson. So I try to keep a very broad range of music 
with me because it helps and so far it has helped me. Today, his skill on the drums has made him one of the most sought after drummers in Ghana with a client base including gospel star Kwesi Oteng, BET's best international act Africa awardee Sakodie, and international gospel music star Micah Stampley. That's one of like the craziest stories of my life, I can bet you. Because I'm in Ghana one day and he's going to come to Ghana for a praise and worship event. And this guy, he's, he's one of Ghana's biggest gospel artists. They call him Koda. Koda says, hey, Jay, I need to talk to you about something. What's up? I'm like, I'm good. He's like, okay, so if I need to be extra nice. I said, okay, cool, I can do that. And then I hear someone in the line says, hello, my name is Michael Stav. I threw the phone away and picked it right back up a bit. Huh? It's like, I want you to play drums for me. I'm like, what? I, I had to mouth that because I couldn't believe myself. This is Micah Stampley. I was there the first week when he actually had a worship service to everybody. And the next week, I'm going to be playing with him. Wow, how does that happen? And I remember it was crazy. I was the last one to get to rehearsals because of traffic in Ghana. I got there late. Micah made everybody wait up for me. I got the rehearsals, was short, straight to the point, it was great. We nailed the event, it was awesome. And then we became friends, because he just became like a big brother to me. So every time he's coming to GH for something, he's like, man, I'm on my way, I need you on drums. Or hey, where are you at, I need to meet. Like, you know, we just became like a bond, like nephew, uncle kind of thing. Hey, blah, 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 what you say to me? what I say to him when I had nothing I had faith and that was something now I'm living flyers his exposure to music systems in other countries in Europe and America have helped him have better understanding of what music and entertainment should be in West Africa a lot of times nine out of ten times some people want to take the easy way when it comes because it's entertainment some people want to take the easy way to entertainment some people do not even understand what it is to be an artist anymore. When I think about artists, I think about paint, dirt, grit. I think about brushes. I think about the personality. Now, a lot of times, many artists do not realize that. They think it's easy. Hey, get this DJ. He's just going to blast what I did in the studio, and I'm just going to hold a microphone, stick it in my mouth, and just mime. Are you serious right now? Nobody does that anymore. You say you want to be a real artist. Please be a real artist. It, I'm not saying this because it's, I'm saying it generally. It happens in Nigeria, it happens in Ghana, and it's the same thing. A lot of people will never take it serious. I, I can still say that there's a few people who really take their music seriously, especially those artists who go live, who have been able to fuse digital with acoustics, and it becomes a big sound, and it makes them go out. Because when you get international, Nobody's going to want to hear what they've already heard. They want to see how creative you can get with your music, you know? So that's what I think. I think that we're doing great, but we can do better. So I wish that a lot of times most of our artists would just suck it up, pull themselves together, get the band, get those equipments, get a studio, put yourselves in rehearsal mode, learn how to work your way to the top. That's, that's basically what I can say. But so far, hey, everybody's doing great, and that's awesome.